Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at the University of North Dakota Signature Event here at Mall of America. We're checking in 9364 V Vitality coming in out of Tennessee. Had a chance to talk to a lot of these students actually a couple of years ago. Uh, so we're excited to see you again back here on Pits and Parts. Uh, Vitality's got a great robot this year. Uh, definitely the best four bar that I've seen here uh, at Mall. Uh, overall, great compactness that goes into it. You gotta take a look at these flaps that they're doing. I'm very excited to dive more into that and what's gone into it. Some cool Delring guides and just uh, some great overall design. They're match play so far. It's been very robust and can't wait to learn more about what's gone into this robot here early in Pushback coming up on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Isaac, a lot to cover on this robot here, but obviously the lift is a huge centerpiece uh, that you have, so just walk me through a bit more of the design and concept of it. Yeah, so we wanted um, a mechanism that allowed us to have um, a certain number of balls. We chose seven because that's the number of balls that is in the middle goals that the middle goals can hold. And also seven is most likely able to get you the control bonus on the long goals since they can hold 15, but most like they never usually hold 15 because that takes a lot of um, like compactness and all the balls have to be really close together for that to happen. So we wanted um, a design that would allow us to do that. And so we decided that a lift would allow us to do that because the lift can lift to different heights for both the low, the middle, and the long goal. And um, so that allows us to score a quick burst of seven balls in those and get bo um, control bonuses for all of those different goals. And one thing that we noticed when we designed this bot is that um, if we had a mechanism or just a thing that allowed us to line up with the the long goals especially that would be very helpful and so we tested different different ideas and we decided that these delrin pieces right here um we raise the lift real quick these delrin pieces right here allow us to um to align very easily so the the orange parts of the goals will slide in right on here and we're able to align very quickly and easily with those long goals and it makes it very hard for teams to push us out because the long goal is all the way into our bot and so even if teams push us from the side as long as Henry or driver can drive forward we're able to stay there and that just helps with a lot of consistency and high, it makes our bot really high scoring. When you're coming up with your initial designs uh, for this robot it's once again we're early in the pushback season um, what made you come up with like this type of like going with the lift going with the chassis is kind of like that like what was kind of the aha moment for you to say this is the route we want to go? Um, it was more just like prototyping and just playing around with different designs. We sure. prototyped with just a cycle bot that is kind of similar to a change-up bot. And we prototyped with um, a shopping cart bot. Um, and we just found that this worked really well with Henry's driving style and with our team's style. And just being able to do quick bursts with that instead of long, long bursts with the shopping cart or something like that, where it can be pushed off to the side, worked really well for us. Joe, let's talk about your uh, match loading uh, system you have here. And one of the things we mentioned earlier, uh, you're doing something a bit different from other teams with your flaps as well too. So talk to me more about that. Yeah, so the match loader, we did a lot of prototyping before, kind of like Isaac was saying, when we went to the initial designing of this robot. Um, and one of the first things we tested was the standoff mech that a lot of teams are running, which is just a standoff across, or yeah, standoff across with high strength shaft collars with standoffs coming down. And one of the biggest problems we had with that was it didn't have very much forgiveness. Like you had to be dead on in the middle for those balls to come out cleanly. So we went into, me and Isaac went into designing this and we initially got a smaller Lexan piece right here and found that it was a lot cleaner and the balls, the block slid in really smoothly into the intake. So we went out and Henry tested a bit and it still didn't have that give that we wanted where you can come in at different angles. So we just increased the sizing and then added these bands here so it's able to flex once the, the yeah, you wanna lower it? Once the robot drives into the mash loader, it's able to flex like this, so the balls are able to just drop in. And uh, actually, a really good reason they're able to intake so smoothly is, if you can raise this a little bit, our intake is actually made out of flaps instead of flex wheels or rubber band rollers. And we found that flaps have been really consistent for us because it's able to like dig into these the weird grooves of this of the blocks, which flex wheels would kind of spin off and the balls would kick out sometimes. 
And then rubber band rollers work really well with the blocks, but they're also really, uh, they're not very durable. Like any other team can crash into it and then your rubber bands can pop and then you're kind of screwed for the rest of the match. So that itself has made it really consistent for us. And then for the end of the matches, we actually, you didn't talk about this a little bit, but we actually have for parking, we have these Lexan or these Delrin pieces that we ha added on here because our base is it's four or it's four wheels which lowers the gaps but there's still gaps in between each wheel so what this does is when we kick up onto the wheels it's able to slide through the gaps and lit and lock into this little divot right here which basically is able to do like a half park so another team could come in and half park with us that way we can a double park which is worth 30 points which is a huge swing at the end of a match from that double parking, have you been able to do that yet here at Mall? Are you seeing a lot of teams wanting to double park with you so far? Yeah, uh, in our match where we scored 161, we actually double parked at the end. Um, we had them park first because theirs was a little bit more inconsistent than ours. And all we did was just back up and it just slid right into place pretty easily without any problems. Uh, Henry, you have something interesting in your robot called the Anti-Henry, which is interesting that you're the one that's been chosen to talk about this, but talk more about uh, what the Anti-Henry is and some of the other benefits of going with this type of robot too. Uh, yeah, so we made this mech. We called it the Anti-Henry. It's really just uh, wheels on a one by that we attach to the gears of our lift. And basically to whenever the lift is raised, um, we have these wheels pop out. And it's basically where if I got, because when you have a lot of balls in here, it gets really back heavy and you could slowly tip as teams, uh, you could tip as teams uh, push you. So we basically made it to where one example is when we were in our uh, match earlier, uh, the field actually disconnected, but it kind of showed how it worked when we um, uh, kind of hit the goal because it DC'd and we kind of landed on our back. I'm trying to not break the robot here. Um, we landed on our back, but it's really easy to get back up because we have these wheels contacting the ground and all I have to do is drive backwards to get back up. Um, and it's really, it fits well for our driving, my driving style just because I'm driving really fast and honestly a little reckless sometimes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's just really good for our strategy on being a quick robot moving around the field and scoring quick bursts. What's some of your other match strategies you've been finding here, especially playing a few matches now at a mall? Has that evolved or changed for you at all? Or have you noticed any big differences maybe you didn't think coming into this event? Uh, yeah, we've kind of adjusted our strategy a little bit as we've been at the event. We've kind of realized that um, it's good having this robot because we don't need to do these huge like 15 ball pushes like the, uh, you'll see shopping carts do into the goal. If we already have an Auton, Isaac uh, is our programmer. He's done an amazing job giving us uh, a lot of nine and 10 ball. We have a 10 ball solo win point and a lot of other nine ball uh, Autons. So we're basically already ahead at the beginning of the match. Um, and we kind of just continuously match load and quick burst into the uh, goal just because we don't want to leave the goal for so long to where um, it's wide open and uh, we could get easily defense played on us or get any of our balls descored. So it really fits, these quick bursts really fit our strategy. So we're not spending too much time in one uh, space. Well, last thing I just want to ask you, I'm just noticing, like you do have like the open top here on your robot, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're competing a match, is there any fear of like the balls popping out over here or anything like that? There is no fear. We've a we've actually added these uh, little pieces of, um, what do you call it? Latex. latex tubing. And the latex tubing uh, really, it doesn't look like it would do much, but because when, if you get intake really quick, because when, if you have lots of balls back here, I'll just, I'll just do it myself. But if you have lots of balls back here, they're actually kind of all hit together and it's sure. actually rubbing on here, but it's still able to drop down. You actually see this wheel, the intake contacting it right here. That's why it stopped. Um, but it's able to drop down into the intake really easily, but we're also not afraid that like Isaac's autons are really quick. And when he swings the robot um, at first, like we only had this one piece of tubing, is sometimes it would pop out because we're moving really quick and autonomous. Um, but we we added these, it's really simple but effective. We added these last two pieces of uh, latex tubing and it's honestly helped for just being latex tubing. Well, from what I've been hearing, 936 for the whole program's back this year, so keep an eye out uh, for them. Definitely your team has been a great example of that, performing great here at Mall, so we can't wait to see your final results. Best of luck at this event and we can't wait to see you throughout the rest of the season. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.